Hello everybody, welcome back to some more BD Armoury today. Well, today we're taking a look at a new fighter I've developed. I know it's been a while, but uh, I was taking a look at my fighter collection and, well, I've got like two fighters and a bomber of my more conventional craft. Then you've got the Dragonfly family of craft that's got three fighters. Um, but of my flying wing type aircraft, there's only the Panther and uh, it was looking a little lonely, so I thought I'd make it a friend. And this is the fruits of my labour. This is the Vampire. Uh, for reasons I'll come on to a little later. So of course we've taken this up for a test run and yeah, it's performed very well. Um, this is a slightly different craft than what I normally do. Um, what I normally do is I get uh, I get a basic idea for a concept, then I try and work out what I want the craft to look at, and then I, I try and do a fairly basic implementation of that. And um, this is different, it's, it's, it's kind of heavier, it's got a lot more wing surface, a lot more uh, control surfaces. It's the first one of my fighters I've, I've almost over-engineered, so it'll be interesting to see how it performs in combat and whether or not it takes its place as one of my frontline fighters, or whether it fits more under that sort of heavy fighter come light ground attack craft kind of role. As a final test, I did try to fly it under the, uh, the R&D centre bridge and uh, I managed it first time and then realised I wasn't sodding recording the damn thing, but uh, never mind, it only took me 14 more attempts to do it. Um, this is my favourite one of the failures. I just clip the R&D centre, which for some reason causes it to explode, but uh, I nearly land on that little bit by the side of the VAB, which I was kind of hoping I would, and um, or at least, very least hit the VAB, so I sort of hit two buildings on the way through, but uh, sadly no. But eventually, as I say, 14th time's the charm, so uh, anyway, I think we'll dispense with any further manoeuvrability tests. I think we'll go straight into the combat. So we are going to run the Vampire through the gauntlet of my three main current fighters and we start with my kind of conventional Eurofighter-esque Cyclone. Let's get them into the air. Now one of the problems with the Vampire is, of course, where it is kind of over-engineered, unlike my other craft, um, that does mean that it's got quite a high part count and yeah, you can see the uh, you can see that clock going in the corner there. That's that's not going quickly. Yeah, about two two seconds of normal time for one second of game time. Oh yes, I did I did promise I'd mention why I meant um, named this craft the Vampire. Well, when I was building the wing section, I thought it kind of looked a little like the bat symbol, and then I thought, ooh, a bat. What could I call it? Um, what? species of bat do I know? Because bat's not a very good name for a fighter. Well, there's a, a fruit bat and a mouse-tailed bat and a leaf-nosed bat. If you just skip straight to this part of the video, no, I haven't had a stroke. Um, the only vaguely tough-sounding bat I knew of was the vampire bat, and the vampire bat doesn't sound as good as just vampire, so that's what I ended up calling it. Anyway, the fight is beginning. And all our craft turn to loose their missiles. I have done some test fights with this, and what tends to happen is one of these craft will get almost left behind. Won't quite get its missiles away. It does get its missile away, but um, if I switch to the cyclones, one of them always tends to drift off backwards for some reason. But it seems as if this time round that hasn't happened. Anyway, missiles going back and forth. Um, Oh, another, another thought I had whilst I was uh, setting up for this video. What do you reckon life insurance premiums are like for Kerbals? I can't imagine that's a part of the uh, Kerbal financial industry that's especially well developed. Anyway, how are we doing? We're, um, we're getting into about four and a half kilometres. Guns should be opening up anytime soon. Surely Kerman, I think that's how you pronounce that, is, uh, yeah, is trying to close the gap as fast as uh, fast as he can, but uh, has to break off. Looks like there's a missile incoming somewhere. Um, yeah, those vampires are quite a way back now. But uh, now the gunfire reigns in. Can surely Kerman avoid it? There's still a bit of range to go. Let's go back to Jebediah. Jebediah! Laying guns, that looked like a bit of an explosion coming off of that cyclone. Puts a load of guns. Oh, does some more damage. Let's see if we can find that cyclone. Oh, I think this is the one. Lost some control surfaces. Loses the tail fin. 
is now debris, so I think that's lost the uh, lost the weapon manager or the autopilot, and it's now dust. So the adv early advantage is with the vampires, but it's whether or not they can make it count. The game lags for a second, doesn't seem to be for anything major. That is one of the vampires laying guns into that cyclone. We have some damage to one of our vampires, I'll go back to that in a second. But Daft B. Kerman having to pop some countermeasures. But was otherwise in a very promising situation there for a second. What has happened to Richmond Kerman's craft? Oh! Seems to have kept most of the control surface, obviously missing the, um, the tail fins on that side. It's effectively two on two, I think. Seems to be getting into a bit of a... no, not a joust. Oh, that's not looking good for the vampire. And that's not looking good for Jebediah's vampire. It's all going to rest on whether these vampires can actually shake the craft on their tail. And uh, as I said, I'm, I'm not sure who I'd give the edge to in the manoeuvrability stakes. I mean, that cyclone seems to be sticking quite well to Jebediah's tail, but it was having a little bit of difficulty. I think the best bet for the vampires is, is, would be if they were to kind of switch targets. Oh! And that's Jebediah taking some heavy damage there. Lost virtually one half of his craft. Flies past the other vampire, which looks like it also has some damage. That is very bad news for the vampires. I think that's them pretty much out. Daphne Kerman seems to have lost control. Jebediah seems to have regained control, seems to, well, seems to have control of his craft, but, um, yeah, it's not the most manoeuvrable of things at the moment, but he's managing to get some shots off. This would be miraculous if it comes about, oh, that's a very good opportunity, does manage to scorch it. This man is just a hero, isn't he? Doing the virtually impossible with this craft. Daphne Kerman could be serving as a distraction, but I doubt it at the moment. Just doesn't have that stability to try get that craft under control. Doesn't help that she's got throttle all the way up, but uh, looks to be going a little low, but then manages to turn it around a little bit. Daphne Kerman, she has got to be a sitting duck to whichever cyclone is, is, is trying to target her. Missile incoming <laughs> becomes a whirlwind of chaff, but it's not enough. And the penultimate vampire is shredded. What's that over there? That is, yeah, that's the other. Oh. And Jebediah didn't last too much longer either. Are there, is there any damage on the cyclones? Nothing major that I can see. That is a convincing victory for the Cyclones in this first fight. Let's move on to the next one. And Rowena Kerman has just taken out her wingman with a Sidewinder. Hmm. Moving on. So once again, I've lined up my vampires, this time against my club tails. So without any further delay, let's get them into the air. And our second fight begins. Now this is going to be interesting because, um, as I said previously, I wasn't sh quite sure who had the edge in the manoeuvrability stakes between the uh, between the cyclones and the vampires. But um, I'm pretty sure the club tails have a significant edge in uh, in those stakes here. So uh, yeah, as I said, interesting. Um, I'd also mentioned earlier about test fights I'd done. I just do. I normally do two or three test fights before I actually uh, record the video. Just to make sure everything's working, there's nothing I need to correct. Um, and I did that between the Vampire and the Cyclone, and um, yeah, they were pretty pretty well matched, but uh, obviously in that last fight the Cyclones got the better of the Vampires. So more missile tennis going on here. None of... yeah, those two Vampires hanging back, as I said, during those test fights, there always seemed to be one of the Vampires hanging... everything's paused. I thought that was something exploding, but no it wasn't. It's just that moment of lag you normally get when something's about to go south in Kerbal Space Program, but no, everything was uh, everything was fine here. More missiles coming in. 
none of them hitting their mark. This time it seems to be all of the vampires who are sort of holding back, which is uh, is interesting. Mind you, I, I'd imagine they probably have the, the advantage, more of an advantage further away, because close in, that added manoeuvrability is going to count. Gemini Kerman, what are you up to at the moment? Loses a missile, turns, has to start getting some countermeasures away. Everybody's still flying. Yeah, the, va the vampires really could do with a quick, uh, quick missile kill here. Just to ease those nerves, something paused. Oh, and just as I said it, one of the club tails is reduced to dust. So yeah, that's going to make the fight a bit more interesting. Mind you, the uh, the cyclones were effectively down to two, and then um, then we saw what happened there. So yeah, let's uh, let's not count our chickens. More missiles flying back and forth. Doesn't appear to be much happening in that regard. That club tail crashes to the ground. What was left of it? And now the gunfire starts. Who is opening up with that? Jebediah Corman. Jebediah Corman. Jebediah Kerman. That's what I was trying to say. Laying guns into that club tail. Nothing. Oh, my word. That's one of the other club tails gone now. Was that a, was that a missile? That appears to have been... I don't know. How close is the other uh, vampire? I can only assume that was a missile kill. And now... This club tail has the attention of three vampires. That's, um... That's going to be interesting, even with the uh, with the manoeuvrability advantage. Despite being quite heavy, they are they are still quite fast craft. There's not a lot of drag on them. Bit of damage going there. I assume that's just weapons lost. That's a little bit more than weapons lost. Lost some wing, lost some control surfaces. Starts to flip out. Loses an engine. Doesn't have enough intake air. The engine relights. It's going to be de very different difficult to control. Is Shawnee Kerman up to the task? Surely he's just just prolonging the inevitable now. Breaks low. Tries to pull up a little bit. I think I'm going to have to take a look at these vampires and look at their uh, look at their gun placement because they don't seem to be that accurate in the shot, but um can't be too bad, obviously, because they have managed to get some damage done, but uh, yeah, I think it, think that might not be optimal. Does manage to loose a missile at one of those vampires. As that vampire looses a missile at him. To no avail, though. There's a pause. One of those dreaded pauses. Oh. Loses all of the wings down one side. Is in quite a bad dive, but will just about manage to pull out of it, but now... Now is almost literally on a wing and a prayer. I don't think anything short of divine intervention is going to save you now, Shawnee, as more gunfire rains in. Squirrels about flips out. None of the vampires can leap upon him to take advantage, though. Ah, starts to flip out again, loses one engine, gains it back. Oh, more damage, more damage. Now in a completely wingless craft. Yeah, it's quite a resilient little fighter, this uh, this club tail. Those other vampires are still trying to, trying to put guns in, but uh, the water will do what you could not. And it's bye-bye to Shawnee Kerman. So a convincing victory for the vampires. Let's move on to our final fight. So for this final fight, my vampires will be going up against their brothers in arms. The simpler, lighter one of my uh, my flying wing type crafts, the Panther. So uh, let's get this final fight started. Here we go then. Can our vampires make it a best out of three? Our craft turned to, uh, to loose their first volley of missiles. Um, in case you're wondering why I chose the uh, the shot cone intake, that was just something I did on the Panther because it um, 
Just the way the craft was designed, it gave it a sort of a, a nice sort of Blackbird spy plane type feel to it. And I think it it, um, it sort of translates over here a little bit. Not quite as much, but I still, I still like the effect. I like the look of it. So uh, it's mainly an aesthetic choice for that one. Everybody breaking low. Our vampires, where's our third vampire? Where have you gone? There you are over there, I just missed that the first time round. Jebediah fires off his second missile. The gap is closing to about five and a half. Now, uh, these these Panthers are very quick craft, so I imagine we'll be in gun range before too long. Jebediah, what are you up to? That missile goes flying past the Panther. Oh, what was that? That is the... Uh, that's one of the Panthers losing another missile. I thought that was an explosion. Jebediah loses a missile. Lay some guns into that Panther. No. No hit there. Will he try again? It, it keeps lagging. It keeps lagging. I think something's about to explode. But um, not this time, it seems. Double check. Everybody's still in the air, aren't they? Yeah. Everybody's good. Though for how much longer is anyone's guess? Jebediah Kerman was lining up a missile but then gets within range and switches to guns and that is a lot of gunfire but for no reward. Opens up again, is closing the distance. This is kind of the ideal kill zone and one of the vampires is out of here. I don't know what that was. It was probably a missile kill. That's got to hurt. Ah, <laughs> oh, just a tail connector with a... with a weapon manager attached. That's, um... Yeah, these panthers are making short work of these vampires. Look at just that debris cloud. So it looks like a couple of missile kills for the panthers. Evening, th evening things up from the uh, from the couple of missile kills that the uh, the vampires got in the last fight but it is three against one and Jebediah Jebediah much as I admire you I think even this even this might be beyond your exceptional skills another missile coming in yeah from the testing and just from these fights I think I don't think these vampires are ex exceptional at uh, dodging missiles, so that's one thing I might have to retune them for. A couple of missiles go flying off. I'm assuming that's from damage from uh, from that gunfire. Everything else seems to be intact, though. Jebediah comes about. Still has a missile incoming. Gunfire incoming. Does manage to lose a missile. I'm not sure what you're aiming at. That's a bit of debris from one of the Panthers. None of them seem significantly damaged from here. Oh, and the remains of that... Uh, that penultimate vampire hit the ground. No, there's no obvious damage. Rowena Kerman. Laying guns into Jebediah's, uh, Jebediah's vampire there. Valentina Kerman also getting in on the act. And with three lots of gunfire. Oh, Ooh, you can run, but you can't hide, Jebediah. I don't think this is going to be the result you want. Quite the opposite. So unless the Panthers do something stupid, I think this is going to be a clean sweep. I'm quite happy with the way that the uh, vampires perform, though. It's 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 looked manoeuvrable. It's looked capable. It hasn't been completely outclassed in the in its fights. Um, just maybe a problem with gun alignment as I said and maybe just some adjustments needed to be made so it can um, so it can dodge missiles a touch better Jebediah managing to get off a missile more in hope than anything else surely oh my word the game freezes and this time it is t the turn of one of the panthers to be reduced to a smoking cloud could the comeback be on could this be it? Could we finally have our first craft to come back from 3-1 down? I'm, um... 
I'm going to guess not. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the vampire, and very much a mixed bag for it in uh, in today's fight. Uh, we'll have to see. I'll make some adjustments, make some tweaks, do a few more test fights, and uh, see what I want to do with this one. I may just repurpose this into a sort of a more dedicated ground attack craft, but um, as I said, we'll have to see. But uh, that will be all for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, as always, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.